Glad to have you with us here at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. Again, I'm Chris Stewart, filling in for Eli Gold, and we welcome in the head coach of the Alabama women's basketball team, Christy Curry. Coach, always good to see you, and thanks so much for taking some time to visit with us here tonight at Baumhauer's. Well, thanks for having me come out. It's, um, it's awesome to see all this crimson in the room, and we're excited about the weekend and anxious. You know, everybody after this, run over to soccer. They need your support tonight, too. That's right. They so are. A uh, lot going on this weekend. We're pretty fired up. Uh, and that is a, an element to Alabama athletics, and I know this happens a lot of places, but it's where I work. It's where I have for, for two decades now, and it's genuine. The support and excitement that coaches have when one of the other teams on campus has success. I know it's, it's tough. you got your own, your own bubble to work in, but at the same time, you support each other. And obviously with what West Hart's program's doing with soccer, that's a lot of fun to follow. It's amazing. And like you said, it's really real. You know, I've worked at a lot of institutions, and it's not always that way. And so I think the biggest thing about this place is everyone is supporting each other and wanting everyone. It's a rising tide, right? Sure. We all want all tides to rise. And um, it's amazing, the relationships. It's contagious. And I know our team, and we've all enjoyed supporting Wes and look forward to tonight, too. All right, let's talk about your team. And to talk about this team, we really have to go back to last year because I understand the NCAA tournament is where you want to be. But you were in the WNIT and yet more than made the most of it. You go 3-1 and one in that tournament after a strong performance, winning two games at the SEC tournament as well. Talk to me about the momentum that you're able to carry from last season, hopefully to this year, or at least into the off season, with what you did in your program as well as recruiting? Well, I think the thing about it is, you know, going to the NCAA tournament the year before, we lost 78% of our scoring, and it took that team a little bit of time. That's a lot. Sure. That's, and, you know, um, what they did down the stretch, we were playing our best basketball and to win 20 games and to make it to the Final Four of the NIT just kind of jump starts our season. And our kids have a lot of confidence headed into the summer. Workouts went great. Um, we've added a lot of new pieces. I think we've got nine kids on our team that started Division I basketball. So from everybody that's returning to, uh, you know, four new faces um, from the portal, it's a lot to look forward to. We're pretty fired up about the year. It always jumps off the page at me when I see stats about three-point shooting because <laughs> I know it won't shock you. That's the only thing I could do. Uh, but three-point shooting was something that was so successful last year. You break a, a three-decade-old single-season record with threes made. Now, again, you got a lot coming back, which is no guarantee to, to have that type of success again, but it's a good starting point. It's a great starting point. I mean, we want to score early and often. You know, we play a fun style to watch. Um, you know, it's positionless basketball. That's where the game's going. That helps prepare young ladies for the next level. Um, if you come to practice, though, you'll see some made threes. So, again, we return all five starters and have added some really critical impacts in recruiting, and they can shoot the three. So if you can't shoot, you probably don't need to play at Alabama because of the, our system and style of play. But we're excited about the scoring punch coming back. Um, you know, depth is important, Chris. We had right. some injuries there in January, three games with COVID. We just didn't have the depth. So we feel like we've built some depth, some talent, um, really some impact players to add to the players we have returning. And it's going to be fun to watch. It's depth coach that's important not just for the games themselves but practice to make sure you're your I'm not going to say your key players because they're all important but the ones that get the most minutes are being pushed in practice they have to be challenged as well well you want practice to be more difficult than games and you want to make sure that you're not pushing them too hard come January February is when we want to play our best basketball so at the end of the day, um, the depth gives us a different look in practice, um, different combinations. We also have our practice guys, so um, they're a lot of fun to go against. So we just want to make sure we're managing our bodies and, and doing the right things for our players along the way. We're 30 or 40 days from our first playing day. That's a lot of practices right now. So managing that and making sure they're taking good care of themselves and we're not overdoing it and, and, and being prepared for what's ahead in November. Let's talk about more in detail about what's coming back. Seven players, all five starters, as you said. 95% of your points from a year ago and certainly having a, a thousand point score in Megan Abrams is very important. It is. I mean, you look at Megan and Britt and Hannah and Jada and, um, you know, Mingo, Jemiah. I mean, we return everybody. But, you know, I think the thing about those kids, they really care about the front of their jersey. Um, all of them can impact. And um, they've done a great job with their leadership. They really set the tone and helped our new faces get acclimated. You know, the transfer portal was good to us. I mean, right. obviously, that's a new part of college athletics. And 
um, as, as we see, we've really benefited from it, and I think you'll see that this season. Coach, we talked about what you've got coming back, which is so many key pieces to that squad from a year ago, but six newcomers, including, although she's a first-year player, the name is certainly familiar to Alabama fans. It definitely is. You know, we're excited to, uh, I bet you're talking about Sarah Ashley Barker. That's a good guess, There Coach. you go. That's a good guess. Um, we're excited for Sarah Ashley to come back home after starting a couple years at Georgia and um, really adds a dynamic to our team with some toughness. Um, and, and we're excited, that's for sure. And then we add some more new faces we're equally excited about. So, um, Loyal Cla McQueen, Georgia Tech, Ryan Cobbins, North Dakota State which they love their basketball there. I know we've, we've seen them in a lot of early season games on the men's side. I'm going to need your help. Is that Aaliyah Nye? That is Aaliyah Nye, I the got leading it right. scorer from Illinois, um, who can really shoot it. You talk about hitting the three. I mean, she can hit it from deep. You'll have fun fun time watching her shoot. How about Gianna Cunningham? Uh, Gianna Cunningham, 6'5", um, post player that really gives us some depth inside with Kyla Wade Warden and Jada Rice um, and has a lot of potential. We're excited about her size. We talk about your team and what you, you have and who you are offensively. 6'5 in women's basketball, that means you're going to have quite a post presence as well, obviously. Well, at our level in the SEC, you got to have some rim protection, you right. know, and that's so important um, in this league, as you know, the big, the physicality and the paint. And, you know, a lot of players aren't used to that in high school, so the ability to finish and to have a true look every day really helps our perimeters improve. And, we feel good about our depth at the post. Kyla, Jada, Jayana, you know, 6'5", 6'4", 6'5", I think that's okay. That'll, that'll give us some depth at the five. So with all of the returning players and the, the transfers that have come in, you have a very small, like, one player freshman class. Is that correct? We do, and, and she's a special one. Uh, Miss Tennessee basketball, Carly Weathers, um, really adds a dynamic and brings a lot of maturity. I mean, she's played at a really high level in the summers, won a state championship, a two-time Miss Tennessee basketball, like I mentioned, and she brings a lot of maturity, even though she might be a freshman. Our older kids have really done a great job of leading her. Um, I tell you what, but she's got a lot of leadership about her, so... I could go on and on. You know, it's very competitive in practice, um, but that's great. That helps everyone's game elevate. Let's talk about what's coming up because practice is ongoing, but you've got an open practice coming up, and you encourage people to come watch your team, I know, but especially the students on one uh, taking place October the 12th. Yes, October 12th, come out. We've got some free giveaways, free pizza. Um, we go at 1 o'clock. We'd love to have all our fans, our booster club, all of our students. Um, so on October 12th, we hope to see everybody in Coleman that day. Should be a lot of fun. Get your first look at our team. Next Wednesday? Next Is Wednesday. Right? It's okay. here. It'll yes. be uh, 1 o'clock and again, pizza for the students. So come enjoy that. You also will go to Birmingham. And I noticed this year, SEC Media Days, they've really got them split up over two. They've got the women's uh, coaches and players that'll be there one day, the men's uh, representation the next. But to have that in Birmingham is, is something that always is kind of the unofficial tip-off to the season. It really is. It, we're just great, excited. It's, it's good to be back in person. You know, right. COVID, um, we took a little bit of a break, and now to have that experience and to be so close by in Birmingham October 18th, be a lot about our team that day, and we're excited about the league. It's going to be as good as it's always been from top to bottom. All this other stuff we've talked about is great, but November 7th is, is what – all of you get ready for, all of us get ready for. It's the start of the season, and it's part of a doubleheader, which is something that, that I know has been done or attempted to do for several of, of the last few years for Alabama men's and women's basketball. Yeah, we're excited. I think it gives our fans a great opportunity to see both teams. Uh, it's so fun to work with Nate and his staff. I mean, we're excited for their season, and, um, you know, we really work well together. So we support those guys. We hope everybody will come out and get a look at both teams. Um, it's a good opportunity on November 7th and Monday. Uh, what else can you do on a Monday? That's right. Exactly right. You got, Let's go. you got two hoops games that there day. You go. got the men taking on Longwood, and the women will play Alabama A&M. And, of course, we remind everybody you can find out all the details online at RollTide.com, including a tournament you've got going on. Tell me about the Baja Mar Hoops Pink Flamingo Championship. I'm going to guess that is not in Anchorage, Alaska. No, that is in the Bahamas. Okay. You've probably been there. Um, I was supposed to be, but yeah. I had a little medical deal that kept that's me out right. of it. That's right. Yes, no, we're it's glad okay. you're back, though. Yeah, I mean, that's me a comeback. Too. Me too, but, you know, it, it kind of stunk watching that uh, on television. But you'll be in the Bahamas, and that's a great thing. It is a great thing, and we get a chance to play a really good Utah team that was in the tournament and a really good Wake Forest team. I think five of our first seven, Chris, games are on the road. 
So if this team, this team's going to get a challenge really quickly. Um, it's really difficult to go on the road, but it prepares you for the SEC. So November's going to be interesting. We're just excited. Uh, you know, the Bahamas is always a great tournament, and they've started on the women's side finally. Right. So the men have always led the way with that, and I think it's a great educational opportunity to take your team to those kind of experiences. Tenth season, Alabama. How is that possible? Hey, time flies when you're having fun. I guess it? so. In 24 years. As a head coach, started when you're 12, so it's yeah. been great. <laughs> Just really blessed. You know, what a special place. We're excited about, um, you know, what we've accomplished, but looking forward to the future and feel like we have one of our best teams, and I know they're excited for the opportunity this year. I know that it's not about just the finish. There is the journey. Uh, I get that, and, and you've had some success with this program, but as someone who has taken a program like you did earlier in your career, to a Final Four. Tell me what that would mean to be able to do that at the University of Alabama, um, where it's happened once, but it's been a long time. Absolutely, it's been a long time, and um, Rick Moody and what he means to our program will always be special, um, and he's one of our biggest supporters. But, you know, that's always the goal, to compete at the highest level. I mean, that's why we do what we do, and to have the opportunity to do it at Alabama would be incredibly special. That's why we came, and that's what we want to do. Looking forward to that happening. Look forward to this season, Coach. Always appreciate the time and great to see you. Thank you. Roll Tide. Appreciate everybody tonight. Have a good weekend. Roll Tide. Coach Christy Curry with us here at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. Again, the season will get started on November 7th, but you got the open practice October 12th and a whole lot more. It's all online. You can find out the information at RollTide.com.